Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Uh, I'm doing another video. If you're um, new to my channel, I'll try to describe it, um, what's going on, so you'll kind of get an idea. Um, if you're a continuous subscriber, uh, you're in for another treat today. But anyway, here's how usually my channel goes. On uh, either Sunday or Monday, I usually do a heavier tech video where it's got, it's more a heavier topic. It's something to make you think about. Um, anyway, that's usually on Sunday or Monday. It really depends on when it uploads. Wednesdays are product highlight and that's today or Thursday depends also when it uploads So I'll do like a product in this one in this case today's AFR 305 and usually on Fridays I go over some racing stuff like the s10 and what's going on with it or the Camaro or one of the other projects around the shop um, But anyway today's is about this AFR 305 big block Chevy head And we'll talk about some of the stuff with it and I'll try to give you as much information as I can in the shortest amount of time So that you guys can get on with your day. So let's begin so this is an out of box head, box stock, and it's one of the cheaper ones the AFR has. So it's like, AFR has two versions of this 305. They have one that's got 117 cc chamber, and then they have another one that's 121 cc chamber. Now, by the way, if you read their listing, it'll say um, that the 117 cc chamber is partially CNC'd. This one is the 117 cc's. And let's see, it is not partially CNC'd. As you can tell, it's completely CNC ported on the chamber. But if you notice, well, you can see all this, see these ridges? These are the CNC lines. So they're pretty they're pretty ragged, I'm not, not gonna lie. But that's what you get what you pay for. On the 121 cc version, the CNC lines look like this. And you're like, I don't see a line. That's kind of the point. It's much smoother. The reason why these are cheaper is because it takes less time for the machine to cut this than it would if I kept doing smaller and smaller steps to make the finish smoother. So that's why. The 121 cc chamber is supposed to actually flow more, so I don't I, th I don't know if I've seen an AFR 305 that's had the 121 cc chambers. Mostly they get them like this. So anyway, there you go. Um, anyway, we'll go through some other stuff about the head. It has a 225 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. Um, I've already gone over the chamber size. Every head that they do comes with this um, CNC bowl blending. And that's what you see here. And they do this both on the intake and exhaust. So this is the exhaust. Now I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, the exhaust really doesn't, oh, I should also say it's also done on every intake port. The big blocks, by the way, have a long runner and a short runner. I've flowed both. So you're gonna get flow numbers at the end. But anyway, this is a long runner. You can tell it looks differently than the short runner. The exhaust is done too, but if I shine the flashlight in, and you're like, I don't see any CNC bowl work. Because let's just take a look here. Doesn't really look like there's much done. Maybe some here. Well, I can go ahead and tell you since I flowed this, this exhaust port flows abnormally low compared to the other ones I've flowed before. Because this isn't the first set I've had in my hands. It's I've done multiple. I've ported several sets of these. And this one probably the worst one as far as exhaust flow. And let me show you why. It has to do with something called core shift. So I'll show you what I mean. Here you can see the CNC bowl blend. And if you look right there, there's a heck of a ledge right here. So usually it's smooth and comes right out, but there's a ledge right there. Uh, this is where most of the air actually travels. So having that ledge there really hurts the port and it's all the way on this side. Now, if you notice, you didn't see any CNC really bulb in on this side. What's happened is the port itself is shifted up and when it shifts up, it moves away from where it would be cutting here but it puts way more material on the short side, hence leaving this little ledge here. So that's common with as cast heads. Some manufacturers are better than others. This just happens. Now, there's that. Now, let's talk about something else that's cool about the AFR 305 head. Let me do my best to get my light here. Oh, just trying to do two things at once. Okay, almost had it. I actually had done another take of this and a customer walked in. So I had to redo this. All right, you can see it now. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be it, yeah, maybe. You see this right here? This is the vein that's around the valve guide. On the AFR 305, they extend it all the way up. That's what you see. This isn't the shadow, that's actually it. Right through here is the vein. It's on the roof. Now, some people put wings on the floor AFR on this one puts it up the roof, which is kind of clever in a way because 
Um, if you look at airspeed stuff, usually the route here's fast, but as you go travel towards this, towards the short side, it actually goes pretty slow because there's not a lot of air up there. So if you fill in the area, you should, you know, it's kind of deader up there. Um, anyway, so they do that by putting this vein here and it kind of fills up the dead zone, so per se. It also makes the port smaller, so it becomes 305 cc's. So anyway, sure helps. That's something unique to the AFR 305 head. I've never seen it in any other head. Okay, let's continue on though. Now, this is an American head. I'm positive it and I can't wait to show you. Okay. Um, I will say I found like a chunk here and I, the previous take I, um, I had it here. It was just stuck here. So whenever you take apart any set of heads out of the box, look for stuff like they just missed. And that was one. But anyway, I cleaned that up. But back to the reason why I know it's made in America, I want you to look at this. You see that right there? Now, it doesn't look like anything big deal. And some people kept claiming that AFR heads were made in China. And some of their enforcers are. And those small block Chevy heads look, you know, did not look the same as some of the other ones. But I can assure you this big block head is definitely made in America because that logo is Elderbrock's logo, which means Elderbrock cast this head. Now, before someone misunderstands this, there are only two head manufacturers that I know of that actually cast their own heads. That is Brodix and Profiler. They're the only ones I know, head manufacturers, that cast and machine their own heads. The others, like Dart, um, AFR, and many others, they don't um, cast their own heads. They have some other company that casts it for them, and then they do their own thing to them. This does not mean this is an Elderbrock head, that you can just go and buy an Elderbrock head, same as AFR. It is not. All Elderbrock did was said, hey, I'm going to give you a design. Can you cast it for me? Like, sure, this is going to cost you X amount of money. Sure, we can do that. I mean, you going to order a 1000 Sure. That's what's happened. AFR then does all the other stuff to it. They just had somebody else cast it. Made in America. This one. Okay, now, I want the parts, because that gets brought up a lot. This is the intake valve, and this is the exhaust valve. They are not made in America. I believe these ones are probably made in Argentina. I'll go ahead and tell you straight up, we like to think America is the best of everything, and it is in a lot of aspects, but the best valves are made in Argentina, not in America. So, at least stainless. Titanium is a different story altogether. But anyway, uh, their valves are quality, nice stuff. Good job there. This is their springs, and their springs are, this is a pack spring, so it's a good spring as well. So, good quality components. And I really do like their seals. So, these are metal clad. That's what this means, metal clad. It's to prevent the spring kind of from rubbing. In case it does, it's not gonna tear it up. So there you have, there you have that. All right, let's go on. Let's look at the exhaust port. Ooh, a little bangy. Oh. Here you see the exhaust port. Now the exhaust port on these is raised up. It's a raised up exhaust port. Some heads have higher raised exhaust ports, but this one does have a raised exhaust port, but not as high as what some of the other brands would see. Okay, so there's your exhaust port. All right, let's just go to the flow numbers. Let's look at those, because that's kind of the final thing I really wanted to get to. So I pulled it on my Sanyaz bench, and here are your flow numbers. Okay, this is a 4310 bore. And every big block has a, this is a long runner. Oops, I think I wrong one. Yep, this is the short runner. And this is the long runner. The two runner designs are totally different because one's going towards the center and one's going towards the uh, uh, wall. So because of that, they flow differently. So, but I flowed both anyway. Both of all these are flowed on a 4310 bore, my Sanyaz bench. Sorry about my nose, it just decided to run right now. Anyway, uh, if you look at the numbers, the 400 numbers are one I would pay close attention to. They're really good. That's a long runner, short runner. Matter of fact, for a 4310 bore that my bore's sleeve is not notched, this is the highest one I have seen from an as cast head on my bench. Um, some ported heads do not flow this on a 4310 bore. But the peak flow is kinda gonna let you down. The peak flow is only 348 which seems a little low, sorry, 347, and 337 on, on the short runner. So 
you know, it's not bad for peak numbers for the size that it is. But if you're hoping to be like, see some 400 CFM number or 350, it's just not there. Low lift numbers are really good though. So there's something to, you know, keep your hopes up about. But overall, as far as the, for the size of the port, this is pretty good. Now, I don't know, I think AFR claims it flows a little bit more, but it, not on my bench. But for the size, pretty good. But let's look at the disappointing part, the exhaust. This is the exhaust numbers. Now, they kind of break my heart because I know I've seen exhaust numbers from AFR that have been higher before. Because I've flowed several of them. <sighs> this happened because of that ridge on the short side. Sure, I could grind it out and I guarantee I'd probably get it up to where usually they flow like 270s. This just didn't because of it. So it's just one of those things. Kind of a heartbreaker. Now this is flow without an exhaust pipe too. So don't compare it to AFR because they only flow with an exhaust pipe. So anyway, yeah, kind of a heartbreaker on that deal. But anyway, uh, good head. Very good head. Can't complain. By the way, here's something else. These heads are really backed up. It took me, I ordered this head the 1st of April, and it is now June 4th. So that's taken that long to get the head. And here's how I knew it's kind of new, newer. This is the date code. That's February, and you could barely make that out, but that's a 21. So February 21st is when it was cast, evidently. I know it's hard to see. So anyway, just something to kind of keep your an eye out for, to be patient with people that are, if you've ordered the head, understand it's gonna take a while for the head to come in. It just is. Um, they're really backed up. So, and I know for a while, Elder Rocket closed down its foundries because of the whole COVID thing, and I'm sure they're trying to get spooled back up too, so it's 